Hey makers, this is Thruveen and I welcome you all to Power BI Dataflow step by step series. You are watching the first episode of this series and in this session I am going to talk about what is Power BI Dataflow and in which scenario or in which use cases you can go with Power BI Dataflow. With that we will also talk about the prerequisites that you need before you get started or enter into this series. We will talk about which are the licenses you need for Power BI data flows. So stay tuned throughout this entire session. One more important announcement. I launched my own Instagram page where I am uploading different short tips and tricks related Power Platform. So if you wanted to be a part of my Instagram family, do follow me on Instagram. The Instagram ID is available here or here or maybe in the description box. Also, as you are watching the first episode of this series and you wanted to move through to the previous or the future episode of the same series, check the description box for the latest link. As well as in future, if I am extending this particular series, I will place the latest link always down below in the description box. So without wasting much time, let's get started and talk about what is Power BI data flow. But before that, here is an intro. The very first question arises in your mind that what is Power BI data flow? Let me explain you in a simple term. I can say that a Power BI data flow is a collection of tables that are created and managed in Power BI service workspace. Now here I have used the term table. Now what do we mean by table? A table is nothing but a set of columns that are used to store the data same like a table in a database. I know it is still confusing for you. So let me explain you in a more simpler term over here. You all know about Power Query. When you, you load your report to Power BI desktop, behind the scene Power Query is used to transform and perform some ETL operation on your data. So data flow is something which is the advanced version of Power Query, meaning everything that you are doing at this moment in the Power BI desktop, all of those things you can achieve with the help of Power BI service, meaning it's a Power Query online. We can run all Power Query processes or operation from the cloud independently from the Power BI desktop report. Now, what do we mean by all of these things? Let's get more clarity on that. A Power BI data flow is somewhat which is different than Power BI report. So with the traditional development, what we are doing, let me explain you. So as a part of traditional process, we are just load our data to our Power BI desktop report, build some visualization, and then we are publishing the report to Power BI service. And when we publish this report to Power BI service, you can see this is one report file and this is one data set file, right? So behind the scene, when you publish your report, it is divided into two parts. One is your visualization means report file and one is your data set file. Now this data set file is something which is associated with this particular report. Now data flow is something which is totally independent from this particular data set. And the refresh is also performed independently in the cloud. And in Power BI data set, actually we stored the data in memory. So whenever you are developing the report and you are loading the data in your Power BI desktop, so what it will do is it is store the data in memory of Power BI right and when you publish that it is going to the service now the question arises in your mind that now where the data flow is storing the data so actually behind the scene it is using the process of azure data lake storage so uh, let me explain that to you with the help of simple example so consider that you have different data sources and you are creating one data flow on top of that so what happened here is in Azure Data Log Storage Generation 2, it is storing all those data over there. And from there, you can access that data flow 
to your Power BI report and dashboard or in data set to build some beautiful report. So data is stored as entities in Microsoft common data model compliant folders, right? Now there are lots of questions in your mind at this moment, right? That uh, you know the data flow is storing the data into Azure data log storage. So do we need any Azure subscription or what kind of extra thing do we need here? So let me clarify that thing to you. So to give your answer, you do not need any additional Azure license. If your organization already have the license, that's good. But if you don't, then it's totally fine. You can create data flow even with the pro license. Also, you can develop that with the premium license or premium per user license as well. Right. So hope this is giving you more clarity over here. Right. Now, the question arises in your mind that yes, Ruvin, we understand the difference between the regular Power BI report development uh, that we are doing and what is data flow. We also get some idea on the, that part. Now, when to use data flow? Can you please explain us? So, yes. Let me talk about that thing. So let's say for an example, you are developing one sales report for your organization. And in the sales report, there is one table called product, let's say. Now product table is something which is used into your sales report as well as it is used into some other reports as well. Like let's say if your uh, finance report or let's say for an example, if your uh, tracking report if you are using the same product table then what happen here is if you load that to power bi desktop then you need to load that table every time from the source and consider one thing that on that product table you are performing some operation on your power query let's say for an example based on the product you are just adding uh, different color codes or maybe you are just adding some calculated columns in power query or let's say for an example you are performing some operation like sorting or uh, let's say you are replacing some products with some another thing so you need to do the similar operation onto all your power bi file so let's say you are building three power bi report with the same product table, then you need to perform all of those operations everywhere, right? Now, the maintenance process is becoming so heavy with this kind of mechanism. Now, data flow is something which will provide you the centralized location to your workspace. So, let's say I am building one data flow with product table and perform all the ETL operation onto Power BI service itself. And then I will call that data flow to my Power BI desktop from my workspace. Then what happen here is no matter like if you are creating four report, five reports or thousand reports at that time also the maintenance work becomes so easy. You simply need to make the change to your data flow and everything becomes so easy for you. Right. So this is the beauty of data flow that you have centralized data warehouse where you can reuse your tables to multiple reports right so this is the main use case and this is the case where you need to use this particular thing a second most important thing like data flow is independent from your report refresh so even with the data flow you can uh, do eight refresh in a day so what happen here is you can refresh specific tables with data flow so like let's say in this particular table product table let's consider in product table let's say i have loaded uh, one table called product and i need that table to be refreshed on every week so i can configure separate refresh for that thing and for more transactional data i will load into some another data flow and i can perform refresh like in every one hour so that can become one another advantage right so hope so far you just got an idea about what is data flow right and when to use the data flow now in the next session we will talk about how we can create and configure our first data flow to power bi service and how we can install the gateway as well for on-premise data source so stay tuned with me to my next session 
Meantime, if you have any question, feel free to add your question in the comment section. If you are for the first time to my channel, make sure you hit subscribe and press the bell notification to never miss any updates from my channel. I am uploading regular content on Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, Teams and SharePoint every day on my channel. So make sure you hit subscribe to never miss any updates from my channel. If you are looking for any training or consultancy, here is the website. Click on that. It will redirecting you to this page. From here, navigate to the contact page and send your query to me. If you are interested to follow me on all my social media handles, just click on this link. It will redirecting you to this page. From here, you can follow me on all my social media handles. If you are interested to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, here is my Twitter account and here is my Instagram account. So do follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. I recommend everyone to follow me on my Instagram account because Instagram is the platform where I am uploading different short content related power platform. I am uploading different posts, reels, IGTV and so much things over here. So do follow me on Instagram. The Instagram ID is very simple, which is Power Platform Guy. Just type this ID to your search box and you are good to follow me. Also, during the weekend, we are performing some good activities on Instagram. So do follow me over there. If you are interested for audio podcast related Power Platform, here is the podcast channel. Click on that. From here, you can listen your favorite Power Platform podcast on different podcast platform like Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify and much more. The podcast channel name is The Power Platform Show. So make sure that you listen on your different podcast platform. If you are interested for short video related power platform, here is a separate channel called Digital Dhruvin. Subscribe that channel and show your love over here as well. With this, this is Dhruvin signing off. See you in the next session with some amazing content. Have a great day. Goodbye.